Hello again. In the last chapter, we left everyone napping in the midday sun as they had just had their first morning at the fair. Chapter 18 is called The Cool of the Evening. In the cool of the evening, when shadows darkened the fairgrounds, Templeton crept from the crate and looked around. Wilbur lay asleep in the straw. Charlotte was building a web. Templeton's keen nose detected many fine smells in the air. The rat was hungry and thirsty. He decided to go exploring, and without saying anything to anybody, he started off. Bring me back a word, Charlotte called after him. I shall be writing tonight for the last time. The rat mumbled something to himself and disappeared into the shadows. He did not like being treated like a messenger boy. After the heat of the day, the evening came as a welcome relief to all. The ferris wheel was lighted now. It went round and round in the sky and seemed twice as high as by day. There were lights on the midway and you could hear the crackle of gambling machines, the music of the merry-go-round and the voices of the men in the beano booths calling numbers. The children felt refreshed after their nap. Fern met her friend Henry Fussy and ah we've heard about Henry Fussy before. Do you remember he was the one that Dr Dorian mentioned saying that Fern might become less interested in animals if she becomes more interested in boys like Henry Fussy. Excuse me. He invited her to ride with him in the ferris wheel. He even bought a ticket for her so it didn't cost her anything. When Mrs Arable happened to look into the starry sky and saw her little girl sitting with Henry Fussy going higher and higher in the sky and saw how happy Fern looked, she just shook her head. My, my, she said. Henry Fussy, think of that. Templeton kept out of sight. In the tall grass behind the cattle barn, he found a folded newspaper. Inside it were leftovers from somebody's lunch, a devilled ham sandwich, a part of a Swiss cheese, part of a hard boiled egg and the core of a wormy apple. The rat crawled in and ate everything. Then he tore a word out of the newspaper, rolled it up and started back to Wilbur's pen. Now I'm thinking what word he could possibly have torn out of the newspaper. He didn't take a look at it and he can't read himself. So he could have picked up any old word. Take a moment while I drink my tea to think about what would be a good next word for Wilbur to have in, his, uh, in Charlotte's Web. We've had some pig, terrific, uh, we've had radiant. What could be that? It's gonna be a tough one. Charlotte had her web almost finished when Templeton returned, carrying the newspaper clipping. She had left space right in the middle of the web. At this hour, no people were around the pig pen, so the rat and the spider and the pig, they were by themselves. I hope you bought a good one, said Charlotte. It's the last word I shall ever write. That's the second time she said that. The last word she will ever write. I'm wondering why that might be and if there are some clues we've heard as to what's going to happen to her. I remember hearing that she was very swollen and I remember that she said she was going to lay some eggs soon. Hmm. Here, said Templeton, unrolling the paper. What does it say? said Charlotte. You'll have to read it for me. Oh, the rat can read. Forgive me, I made a mistake. It says, humble, replied the rat. Humble? said Charlotte. Hmm, humble has two meanings. It means not proud and it means near the ground. Well that's Wilbur all over actually. He's not a proud pig and he's very near the ground. Well I hope you're satisfied, sneered the rat. I'm going to spend, I'm not going to spend all my time fetching and carrying. I came to this fair to enjoy myself, not to carry paper. Well you've been very helpful, Charlotte said. Now run along if you want to see some more of the fair. The rat grinned. I'm going to make a night of it, he said. 
the old sheep was right. This fair is a rat's paradise. What eating, what drinking, and everywhere good hiding and hunting. Bye bye, my humble Wilbur. Fare thee well, Charlotte, you old schemer. This will be a night to remember in a rat's life. With that, he vanished into the shadows. Charlotte went back to her work. It was quite dark now. In the distance, fireworks began going off. Rockets scattering fiery balls in the sky. By the time the Arables and the Zuckermans and Lurvy returned from the grandstand, Charlotte had finished her web. The word humble was now neatly woven in the centre. Nobody noticed it in the darkness. Everyone was tired and happy. Fern and Avery climbed into the truck and lay down. They pulled the Indian blanket over them. Lurvy gave Wilbur a forkful of fresh straw and Mr Arable patted him. Time for us to go home, he said to the pig. See you tomorrow. The grown-ups climbed slowly into the truck and Wilbur heard the engine start and then heard the truck moving away at low speed. He would have felt lonely and homesick had Charlotte not been with him. He never felt lonely when she was near. In the distance he could still hear the music of the ferry go round. As he was dropping off to sleep he spoke to Charlotte. Sing me that song again about the dung and the dark, he begged. Not tonight, she said in a low voice. I'm too tired. Her voice didn't seem to come from the web. Where are you? asked Wilbur. I can't see you. Are you on your web? No, I'm, I'm up here, she answered, in this back corner. Why aren't you on your web? You almost never leave your web. Well, I've left it tonight, she said. I'm wondering if you can work out just what's been going on with Charlotte as she gets tireder and tireder, and why she might have retreated to the far corner of the crate. Wilbur closed his eyes. Charlotte, he said after a while, do you really think Zuckerman will let me live and, and, and not kill me when the cold weather comes? Do you really think so? Of course, said Charlotte. You are a famous pig and you are a good pig. Tomorrow you will probably win a prize. The whole world will hear about you. Zuckerman will be proud and happy to own such a pig. You have nothing to fear, Wilbur. Nothing to worry about. Maybe you'll live forever, who knows? But for now, go to sleep. For a while, there was no sound, but then Wilbur's voice. What are you doing up there, Charlotte? Oh, making something. Making something as usual, she said. Is it something for me? asked Wilbur. No, it's something for me for a change. Please tell me what it is, begged Wilbur. I'll tell you in the morning, she said. When first light comes into the sky and the sparrows stir and the cows rattle their chains, when the rooster crows and the stars fade, when early cars whisper along the highway, you look up here and I'll show you something. I'll show you my masterpiece. Before she finished the sentence, Wilbur was asleep. She could tell by the sound of his breathing that he was sleeping peacefully, deep in the straw. Miles away, in the Arable's house, the men sat round the kitchen table, eating a dish of canned peaches and talking over the events of the day. Upstairs, Avery was already in bed, and Mrs Arable was tucking Fern into bed. Did you have a good time at the fair? she asked as she kissed her daughter. Fern nodded. I had the best time I've ever had, anywhere or any time of my whole life. Well, said Mrs Arable, isn't that nice? Interesting. Some changes in that chapter that I'm going to leave you wondering about. Some changes with Charlotte's, maybe you can already predict what's going on with her, but also some changes with Fern. Remember, up to this point, the happiest days of her life have been sitting on the little stool watching a pig. But today, she spent the day with her friend Henry and had the happiest day of her life. Times are changing in Charlotte's Web. We'll do the next chapter another time. Bye for now.